What if you could join the HRE as a large nation? Well, Burgundy can. My name is Ludi and today we'll be covering Burgundy as well as the Burgundian inheritance. Wedged in between the Germans and the French, the descendants of Lothar the Great, true heir of Charlemagne, the Burgundians are an ace of old traits, masters of personal unions, and have one of the best mission trees around. If we get 5,000 likes on the video, I'm also going to do a Savoy guide, so let's see what Burgundy is all about. One of the first things to do as Burgundy is to sell your starting ships. We have two heavies and six cogs that we definitely do not need. Sell one of the heavies to Brittany. 40 ducats, that you go. Another one we sell to Holland. Another 50 ducats. Ooh la la. And we're gonna sell the other cogs to various nations around that are interested. We also will be making England, France, and Provence our rivals. Take note, if England did not rival you, you wanna go for an alliance instead. As our mission here, the English alliance requires that we either rival them and insult them together with the French, or we ally the English. When it comes to your estates, you give the plus Plus one admin, military, and diplo. In order to give the diplo, we encourage development and develop the province of Oxara once. Noise. Now we're going to be selling titles. And that gives us minus 7.5% dev cost. And with that, we develop this a second time. And afterwards, we seize a land. After all, a king with no crownlands is not really a king, is he? But here's the thing, guys. I've seen some people saying that it's not worth giving the plus one mana point privileges at the start because your subjects are going to be rebellious. Well, let's look at our subjects here. We got some subjects that we need to go to 0% liberty desire to do our mission placate subjects. How are we going to do this when we have all these debuffs from the Crownlands? We're going to be doing support loyalists in all of these countries here. And for the Nation of Nevers, we're going to be going for the Royal Mary which is going to lower his liberty desire down to zero and that means we can do the mission placate subjects we insult the nations of France and the nation of England make sure it's a regular insult not a scornful one and then you do the English Alliance mission as well easy peasy and we get plus one mana from the start thus getting a ton more mana points in the long run as well as the amazing treasury that we start off with you want to also recruit up to 22,000 units up to your land force limit and we will not be recruiting mercenaries because we have professionalism. Every time you recruit a mercenary company, you lose 5% professionalism. You want to slack in professionalism if you're out of manpower before you recruit mercenaries, but don't waste your professionalism like that from the beginning. One more thing we can do is we're going to be deleting the forts in Picardy and Oxara because these two are farmlands and grassland forts, so they're actually pretty bad and we really don't want the enemy to get free war score on us. We also will be doing a pro gamer move and we're going to be seizing land from the nation of Nevers, which is going to make them very disloyal, so make sure you do this after you've done your mission and from the seas de land we're going to release the nation of champagne which has a ton of cores on the french lands that we will be feeding them in a few moments also because we now have two vassals we can give out these strong duchies that gives us an extra two diplo relation slots and lowers the liberty desire by 10 percent so if you want to get nevers down to below 60 you can either placate them or you can just develop their provinces once and that's going to make them as loyal as you'd like them to be. Aaron Jesus came and he gave us the worst possible outcome. The French actually got the province of Maine and they're not at war with the English. Would have been a hundred times better if they were at war with the English. We are getting our relations with three of the French vassals. Remember, the public wheel mission requires that you have a hundred relations with three of the French vassals and we're going to get those with Armagnac, Foix, and Auvin as these are the easiest ones to get your relations with since they already start French friendly towards you. Another thing to help you out with this is hiring an improved relations advisor like I did to make it a lot faster for you to get those 100% relations. Now we can do the public wheel here mission that gives 50% liberty desire for all of the French vassals that they have at the time when you enact this mission. We will be attacking the French for the reconquest of our course here and in the process we'll be taking the province of 
Paris, which we need to do the mission King of the Franks that will transfer all of the French vassals to ourselves and get the special event King of the Franks. And let's go. Make sure that we take the war target first before anything else. And we can focus on piecing out Provence before we piece out the French if we need to. Now, because their vassals are disloyal, they will not be helping in the war. So make sure that you avoid stack wiping the vassals' armies. The more troops the vassals have and the less the French have, the less likely the vassals are going to be helping in the war. And that is what we're going for here, boys. Allow friendly armies to attach to the main army that you have. And what do you know, excommunicado against Savoie, that is perfect because that's going to be my next expansion path. They have movement locked into the province of Dijon, so we can attack them here and basically just stack wipe them. That was a really dumb move on the French side. Let's go. Another stack wipe for the nation. Of nope, they got reinforcements from the French. Feels bad, man. But still not a big deal. We did manage to inflict a lot of damage. Let's get out of there. If you are about to get stack wiped, always scorch earth and move away. This is going to give this province a minus 50% movement speed for hostile units as long as you control the province. The artist Michold has died, which is sad because he was 50% cheaper, but the French are going to get their asses kicked here. Adarya go stacken Vipen. That means that probably all of their vassals now are disloyal. Let's just double check. 83%, 77, 82, 80, and 88% liberty desire. So these guys are not going to help in the war. The beauty about this is that we can basically just go around stack wiping everybody left and right since they have smaller armies than we have. And that's just going to give us a pile of war score. Remember not to attack whenever you have less morale since you don't want to reverse the stack wipe on yourself. Another thing to help is having a spy network in France that is going to increase the siege ability. So taking down Chartres and Paris is going to be a lot faster then. Also, what on earth? They hired mercenaries, Bandanere. Wow, okay. In that case, I got to be careful and bring my troops closer together before I get myself stack wiped. Since you have 10% professionalism and you cannot hire mercenaries because of that, you can slacken recruitment standards, giving you manpower once and twice. This way, you can reinforce your troops, and once you need more troops, you can just hire the mercenary company right afterwards. Remember, hiring the free company is the most optimal, since they cost 70% less than other mercenary companies, and you can definitely use them to either siege down or reinforce your main armies in battle. Well, 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 the Papal States is quite aggressive, isn't it? And what the hell is happening here? Why are these guys loyal again? They're not loyal. They just randomly decided to move their troops to that province and back. Okay, fair enough. In fact, let's check this out. Are they still disloyal? Yep, they're all still disloyal. Speaking of guys, it's really important that you ask your vassals to attach to an army like I'm asking mine now so that they don't kill off the enemy vassals armies. We also can get the new technology here, a noise. So our troops are slightly better than the French troops right now. Can we actually piece out Provence we can okay, I want to get the humiliation to increase my power projection and the two provinces here so let's go for this we can even take a little bit of cash noise not that much though this seems fair there you go before you go into big battles like this you want to make sure that you shift consolidate regiments and why are their vassals helping them are they not disloyal they're still disloyal but they just decided they want to help actually they're not where are they they were helping excuse me game why is it always rigged against me? Oh boy, our king just died. That is not good. So guys, you have to remember that the Burgundian inheritance is actually tied to Charles, the starting heir. So once this guy becomes your king, you're going to have to go through the Burgundian inheritance if you don't have an heir, which you likely will not have. And don't worry, we want that to happen because it's going to allow us to do some insane things that I will be showing you guys. Let's see if we can stack wipe these guys. We could. Nice. Does the French even have an army now? They got 3,000. Insane, everybody. Insane. We've done enough damage. Damage and we can peace out the French. I'm actually going to go for returning all of my course to my vassal Champagne and I'm also going to take the capital of Paris myself as well as as much money as I can take from them. Now what we can do is we can concentrate in France and then core this up. But most importantly, we need to get two more provinces. Let's make actually the nation of Savoie our next rival. So as I was saying, we need to get two more provinces here because we need to have 18 provinces in order to make 
The French vassals are vassals. Looks like the Papal States has its own crusade against Provence here. And actually, I can also take these two provinces from Savoy rather than the English, which would not be such a bad idea seeing as... Oh, they're actually excommunicated. Hold up a second. Let me bring this guy back here because... This is absolutely a godsend, the fact that these guys are excommunicado here. We will have to fight our ally, the Austrians, but honestly, I'm actually okay with that. In fact, I might be able to find an ally against them. Let's see, Milan might be able to join us. Let's uh, give them an alliance. And does that... Yup! We can promise land to the Milanese and might even deliver this. Let's go, excommunicado, set the war goal to Brescia. And this should be a fun war, guys. One thing I want to mention, and you should be doing this from the beginning, is set the defensiveness edict in both the French Comte state as well as the Valonian state, since this is where you actually have your three forts. If we manage to siege down these parts faster than they siege our parts, we will actually be quite okay. Oh, hello. We can even call in the Papal States. Hell yeah. Let's go, Popio. Let's go. Oh, wow. Seriously, Milan, you actually pieced them out. Thank you very much, beloved ally. You're the best, I guess. Are you kidding me? Freaking Papal States as well pieced out. Wow, you bunch of wussies, man. It's all or nothing, boys. I'm actually going to completely consolidate these units because i am going to recruit some more mercenary companies here as we do definitely need to get more mercs let's try and attack them see if we win this we should have the upper hand here and we oh wow that was actually a stack wipe noise that case let's try and catch these guys here as well and uh destroy them too bros destroy them too orleans opinion of us uh we want them to have good opinion actually of us since they will become our vassals very soon oh god the austrians are reinforcing this is not going to end up well. Yeah, they reinforced. Let's get out of here. It would have ended up a lot worse if we uh, would have stayed in that battle, to be honest. I, I'd rather just pick up my mercenary stack from here and live to fight another day. You know what? I do have 54%, so maybe I can piece them out. I can, actually. This will be a little bit of a nuisance, AE-wise, but I don't mind. We can even take a little bit of cash, so a booyah, noise. Now we can do the other mission here, boys. King of the Franks, morale of armies, Dipro relations. I love this event, and of course, all of these bad boys are now our vassals. We're gonna accept the next level of technology and get the newer troopios here. The good part is that we do have a truce with them until 65, so we have all the time in the world to improve relations. So now, guys, we have the event for Marie of Burgundy. We're gonna accept her, and she cannot be disinherited. So despite being a chat of a lady, she is a part of the Burgundian inheritance cog machine. We have way too many vassals. And because of that, it's really hard to keep them in check. It is close to impossible to keep them in check. I've placated, I've paid off the debt, improved relations with Navars. I've even gotten a royal marriage and I devved up their lands. And they're barely loyal. There is actually a fast way of integrating all of your vassals and subjects. And that is through the Burgundian inheritance. The best way to trigger that is to get Charles as a general which is gonna increase the chance of him dying and it really is just RNG when he does die and if he doesn't die then your second best chance is to integrate the nations of Champagne and Nevers which is gonna make it actually acceptable to keep in check the other vassals this is because all vassals share a common relative army power towards you whilst the personal unions have a separate one not a common pool that is why you never want to have too many vassals or they will start getting massively disloyal. Another thing that makes them stay loyal is having a strong army. That is why I've recruited a lot of extra troops. And wow, Austria just got excommunicated. We have integrated Nivers and we have just integrated Champagne as well. You can if you want to integrate them around the same time. This means that we can essentially get rid of the free company now since we basically have more than enough troops of our own. And with these two nations integrated, the rest of the previously disloyal vassals are now quite loyal actually. Like I said, we cannot rely on this. Sadly, Charles has not yet passed away. 
That would have made our life a lot easier, but until he does, we will go to war with the French once more. We also can get more claims now since we've integrated Nevers, so we can do this mission. We're gonna ask Armagnac to give us one province of La Marche. And, despite them being disloyal, it's not a big deal, we're gonna release the nation of Gascony from here, and with Gascony, we can feed the rest of South France in one year. We also can do our government reform, go for the manpower, later on you wanna go for the autonomy change, Vic Le Truce is over, and we're gonna attack for the province of Limousin. Booyah! Let's go kill some Frenchies, boys, let's go kill some Frenchies. I also have to mention that I went for quantity ideas as my first idea set. It is because you definitely need the extra manpower early game to fight your wars. You don't want to take an admin idea set and you definitely don't want to take a diplomatic one since you will be struggling with your diplo points throughout this run until you integrated all these vassals via the Burgundian inheritance event. A clash of true titans is about to appear. Who will win? The French who are probably bankrupt? No, they just have really bad... Wow, that was a stack wipe. They got no more army, so basically I won the war. Siege of Narbonne proved to be quite long, but not a big deal. We can now peace out the French. We're gonna give all of these lands to our Gascon vassal, and we are gonna take some lands for ourselves. Coalition-wise, it is gonna bring a few nations in a coalition against us, but most of these nations I'm actually gonna be at war soon, so it's not really gonna matter for much. Let's go now. We are pretty much ready for the Burgundian inheritance. It's literally just a matter of when exactly it's actually gonna be happening. Let's concentrate here as well, and core these boys up. The people of Brittany need to be rescued by the mighty Bretonians. Whoa, the Burgundy inheritance just happened. We're only gonna take two provinces. We don't want to risk a massive coalition against us. And maybe some uh, war reps and trade power. That is okay with me. Once the Burgundian inheritance triggers, you do have three options. You can either fight for your independence against the French and eventually the Austrians. Fall on the PU under Austria, but that might have consequences you don't want. Or fall on the PU under the French and then you inherit all of your vassals. Clearly, the French version is the best version since that means that we inherit everybody here and we are in a PU under one of the weakest countries in Europe. Remember, after you do integrate everybody, that you also want to be making full cores out of the provinces that you got, and also you can concentrate to bring more development in your capital, which will actually be quite of help. You can also set the defensiveness edicts now to no edict since you don't need to be at war for the next few years. And Dijonet is now a 75 development province unto itself. That also increased our land force limit by a lot so once we refresh this next month it's gonna be a lot more units that we can field. We're gonna reorganize all of our boys here. This means we can do the Unite the Realms mission. And there you go, we're at 71,000 out of 61,000 land force limit. So we actually can keep all of our available troops right now. Remember to also lower the autonomy in the newly added provinces as these provinces will have high enough autonomy. We were lucky enough and the Duchess has died. That means we can actually declare a war of independence against the French. Let's go boys, let's crush some French badooties. Also, holy mother of God, the new king, Philip the Burgon, is an absolute chad. Holy schnapple, sir. Looks like the mighty French army got itself into a little bit of trouble here. And we are starting to get a coalition ourselves of a few nations in the western parts of the empire, sadly. But we'll be fine. I don't think this coalition is actually going to be triggering against us. Until it does. That was the end of the French army. And we can kill off the pretenders now. Oh, Byzantine refugees. That's actually a really good event. Nice. We also can become a kingdom now since we have the prestige. Well, this is a little bit rude, isn't it, England? Especially since you've basically taken all of Brittany. And I have oh, one province of Brittany here. France is fully sieged. We do have the Scots that we didn't touch yet, but we don't really care about them too much. It's gonna go for this, and coalition-wise, is gonna be a few nations. So we have the option of waiting until the end of the year, but I don't really care. We've taken the province of Berry as well, so that means we have beautiful borders now, with the next war against the French probably being the last war against them as well. We can get some new rivals 
and we're gonna go for uh, these bad boys i'm also gonna go for the austrians actually and hey we can even see some more crownlands so we've now settled the burgundian inheritance but we did not join the empire because in the imperial incident the austrians decided not to let us join the empire that being said there is another way of doing this mission namely we are gonna become the hre emperor we've already gotten alliances with bohemia trier Köln, and salzburg and we have started improving relations sending gifts and doing everything in our power to make these guys vote for us rather than having them vote for the emperor so whenever the emperor dies we are going to be the next emperors of the holy roman empire as such we can both do this mission and join the empire until that point look at this boys we can take this technology for just 312 points why look at all the reduction modifiers it is absolutely glorious Another pro gamer move we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be releasing the nation of Brittany and we are gonna feed them back their cores in a very short war against the English. We're also gonna be building a few workshops around the country so we boost our overall economy and we will be changing our trading capital to Den Haag making the English channel our main trade node which boosts us to 20% trade power in that trade node. Also recommend to get a Diplo Reputation Advisor if you're going for the Emperorship. And let's declare our war. You just have to take the forts they have in the French lands and that should be more than enough. Also for your second idea set, especially if you're going for the Emperorship, but not only because of that, I recommend you go for Diplomatic Ideas as it gives you two extra Diplomats to use. Diplo Relations and Reputation plus two, as well as it lowers the cost for taking provinces and the impact on stability from diplomatic actions such as truce breaking and so on so I was gonna take a province from the Portuguese in case I wanted to go colonial but guess what the Castilians just went nope why have a union with Aragon when you can have a union with the Portuguese I guess we'll just have to get our war score from fighting the English because the majority of my war score would have been gotten by occupying the Portuguese lands in this war tier 3 reform of course go for monthly autonomy change hey both of these sieges fell about the same time here let's see if we can actually take anything from them in this peace deal now we cannot really take all of Brittany so we just have to wait for a little while we do have the ticking war score so it's literally just a matter of waiting if they manage to disembark some troops that's gonna make it extra juicy since we get even more war score there we go 19,000 brave Englishmen about to fight as a Burgundians here Let's send one of our armies to greet these bad boys in good old Burgundian fashion. How you doing today, Englishman? Are you ready for some fighting? Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are, boys. There you go. Ein stacken Wiepen. Now we can take all this shit. And guess what? We can even take a province in uh, the Irish lands. Which is something I'm really, really into. As with this, I can take more war score against the English in the next war against them. I'm gonna piece them out for this. Let's go. We got a nice a big vassal here that we're gonna be uh, integrating at some point. And we just need to take the rest of the lands from the English in the next war. Also, we're gonna make the Irish our first colony, let's say. And this also gives us access to the Scottish land. One, two, three, four of the electors are voting for us. So whenever the emperor dies, actually, is nobody voting for the emperor? Nobody is voting. Do they not have an heir? They have an heir. What is happening there, dude? Oh, guess who's the new elector, everybody? It is uh, Filippo of Burgundia. Hey, hey, that means we can do uh, this mission, join the empire. And now we are a full-fledged member of this holiest of unions, of course. And guess what? We can demand unlawful territory from the Austrians, bro. What? Well, it looks like they don't agree to this, so Austria is in a little bit of trouble. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, and we're also a pretty, pretty massive nation in the western parts of Europe. Don't forget, if we get 5,000 likes on this video, I will do a guide for the nation of Savoy. And check out my Twitch channel. I do almost daily streams. I'd love to see you guys over there. I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much guys for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.